And lastly, authenticity is infection. Infection? Authenticity is an infection. And guess what, guys? I tested positive. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Writing, marketing, and publishing a book is super hard, and there's no way to get through it without making some mistakes. Okay, a lot of mistakes. Oh, no. When I first got started in the industry, I didn't know any other writers. There weren't YouTube videos offering advice. I was completely on my own, and I fucked up a lot. That's part of the reason I started this channel in the first place. I wanted to help writers avoid making the same mistakes I made. You're still making them, but hey, at least I tried. Right now, I am breaking down the 10 biggest blunders I made as a newbie writer. The lessons I had to learn the hard way by landing myself into all kinds of shit. Please keep in mind, these are mistakes I made about a decade ago when I was just 23 to 25 years old. Just a wee dumb writer babe making her way in the world. You're not allowed to judge me. I've seen your DMs. You're not exactly the sharpest tool in the shed yourself. But I'm sharing my dumb assery so that maybe you can make smarter choices because let me tell you, some of the choices I made were so fucking stupid. You're about to find that out real quick. Friendly reminder, Pro Writing Aids Fantasy Writers Week is going down right now and I'm a part of it. You can check out my talk about writing romance and fantasy tomorrow. It's going to be so awesome. I have the information linked below. Definitely check it out. Join the fun. You're gonna learn a lot and have some giggles along the way. Additionally, today's topic was requested by one of my patrons over on Patreon, Emily Cannon. Like so many writers, Emily wants to learn from other authors' mistakes so that she doesn't fall into the same blunders or pitfalls. And you know me, Emily. I'm happy to make an ass of myself. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to my channel and ring that bell. I post new videos on Wednesdays and they're awesome. They're fun. We get a little cussy here. We get a little silly, but it's also educational. So you should totally subscribe. It does me a huge solid and we'll have a blast together. I mean, I see no downside. The first two books in my dark fantasy romance series, The Savior's Champion and The Savior's Sister, are available all over the place. They're available in ebook, paperback, hardback, and audiobook. So if you haven't checked out this award-winning, best-selling goodness, you totally should. I got them linked below. Get on it today. But let's get into the 10 biggest lessons I learned the hard way during my writing and publishing journey. Heed these words wisely so you don't make the same mistake mistakes, please. I beg you. Number one, when seeking advice, look for experience. Sometimes when you have a dream, you're so desperate for advice, you'll take it from anyone. But advice is a dime a dozen. Any asshole can fart out some crap and call it wisdom. I guess if you're farting out crap, it'd be more like a shart but I digress. This sounds like a no brainer, but I've made this mistake along with every single writer I know. When I was first dabbling in publishing, I didn't know any writers, but I did have one friend who did IT work for a writer, which is the same thing, right? It's not. He offered me a ton of advice on hiring cover artists and editors, on putting together websites and street teams. I was skeptical, but I went for it. I was desperate for help and he was the only only one offering it. And you'll never guess what happened. Every single piece of advice he gave me was wrong. Was I bitter about it? Absolutely. But honestly, I shouldn't have been seeking his advice in the first place. If you want to write a book or do literally anything, seek advice from the appropriate resources. That means if you want to successfully publish a book, seek advice from someone who is a successfully published author. This will require some due diligence because unfortunately, not everyone's so ethical. A lot of people are more than willing to spout bullshit for the sake of likes, cash, and views, regardless of their qualifications. Your job is to do your research and make sure that you're utilizing the right resources. Number two, it takes a village. Writing, marketing, and publishing without a supportive network isn't impossible, 
but it fucking sucks. Not only will you fall into the trap of taking advice from idiots like this dumbass, but all the doubts, insecurities, and questions will bubble up throughout the writing process and go unchecked. Writing can be a lonely experience. You're stuck in front of a laptop for hours that turn into days, that can turn into weeks, months, and years, and you're doing it by yourself. It's alienating to have nothing but your manuscript to keep you company, especially during the more confusing and discouraging parts of the writing process. And trust me, there's a lot of them. I learned quickly that it's vital to make writer friends. Mingle within the community, offer assistance, ask for help when you need it. But Jenna, I don't know where to meet writers. I don't know if you're aware of this, but the internet exists. You're using it right now. Writers are abundant on social media. And I may or may not have an exclusive writing group available on Patreon specifically so that other writers can get together and mingle with their dingles. Okay, maybe not the dingle part. Not not only will a community make you a better, more educated writer, it'll strengthen your network, it'll get your work exposed to more readers, and it'll improve your mental health and well being. Number three, filter words. Fucking filter words. Oh, no. Speaking of it taking a village, I had no idea filter words were a thing until I made writer friends. One day I asked my critique partner what she was up to and she said, oh nothing, just deleting my filter words. Filter what? Turns out filter words are normal everyday words that are super detrimental to storytelling. Words like hear, see, think, and feel filter the reader's experience through the main character's perspective, making the work a whole lot less immersive. Which is why it's recommended to use filter words as seldom as possible. It's a wonderful tip I'd like to have known before before I had short works published in various formats. Need I repeat, writer friends are an asset. Make them and save yourself some future humiliation. Number four, outline. People give me so much shit for being a proponent of outlining. They're like, but Jenna, you at least have to try pantsing. No. I have, that's why I'm a proponent of outlining. I've been writing stories since I was six years old, and I've been attempting to write a full length novel since the fourth grade. From ages nine to 25, I'd started over 20 novels and I finished none of them because I was pantsing. I had no direction, I lost track of the structure, I meandered all over the place. Basically, my writing was trash. When I began what eventually became my debut novel, I pantsed as well. And I pantsed myself into a corner by chatting after four. The block was so bad that I completely stopped writing for months. And then I got this amazing idea. What if I outlined the book instead of pulling random shit out of my ass? So I write an outline and lo and behold, that's the first book I was ever able to publish. Funny how that works. If pantsing is the hill you want to die on, have at it. But if I have to choose between emulating Stephen King's method and publishing actual books, I'm gonna go with the latter. Number five, learn to say no. When you're new to the industry, it's great advice to practice saying yes. That means yes to sharing your work, yes to interviews, yes to collaborations, yes to opportunities. This is a great way to get your name out there and spread awareness about your platform. But there comes a time, especially when your brand begins to get more established, that the tides shift. Saying yes feels like less of an opportunity and more of an obligation. You don't need to do this collaboration. You don't have time for this favor, but you feel obligated to say yes for literally no reason. At first, you might see this behavior as giving back, and it's great to give, but doing so at the expense of your mental health, your career, and your family life isn't giving back, it's self-neglect. Early on, I made the mistake of extending myself for other writers who honestly just saw me as a means to an end. That was stupid. It's great to accept opportunities, but be honest about whether or not the juice is worth the squeeze. Are you biting off more than you can chew? Are you delaying the release of your novel for an event that will serve little benefit to you at all? At the end of the day, your health and business matter, so learn to put them first. Which brings us to number six, not 
everyone has good intentions. When I learned the importance of community, I went all in, but I was so eager to make writer friends that I ignored a lot of red flags. In every community, especially one rife with competition, you will find climbers, people who befriend others for the sheer purpose of getting ahead. This is a mistake I made more than once. I thought I'd made a friend, but really a leech had firmly attached itself to my ass and was sucking me dry. If you're not sure whether you've met a climber, there are three tried and true signs. First, climbers will often ask for pretty large favors very early on and with little to no reciprocation. I don't believe in tit for tat, but it's good to pay attention to whether or not a relationship is one-sided, and with climbers, that's often the case. Second, they overstep, usually asking for favors or treatment that makes you uncomfortable. It could be promoting their work, even though it's not your thing, or ignoring your boundaries to suit their needs. And third, they don't respond well to no. They either react with anger, gaslighting, spite, or ghosting. This isn't a healthy relationship dynamic. Friendship is supposed to make you feel uplifted and supported. Yes, it's vital to surround yourself with other writers, but they should be real friends who respect your boundaries. Number seven, no one will ever care as much as you do. Once you enter the publishing process, unless you're a household name, the team you work with is not gonna give that much of a fuck about you or your book's success. This goes for traditional and self-publishing. You are just another paycheck to these people. When I first began the publishing process, I was expecting people like my editor, my proofreader, and my cover artist to be super professional, but that wasn't always the case. The best example I can think of is a freelancer I hired for a publishing-related job that was expected to take three weeks. Instead, it took six months months because she kept disappearing into the void. I'd email her and no response. I'd call her and no response. I ultimately had no other options but to hunt her down on social media and contact her that way. Apparently she had gotten a new boyfriend and was swept away in lust. So much so that she'd forgotten about the service I paid for. It took me responding to one of her tweets about her boyfriend's huge penis for her to finish the job. This may sound like a crazy story, but every single published author I know has experienced something like this or worse at least once. Editors, cover artists, marketing teams, they're all human beings with their own lives, goals, and faults. Some people are gonna do amazing work and some are gonna get distracted by good dick, it happens. These people are an asset to writers and deserve to be treated with respect, but at some point, you're probably gonna have to advocate for yourself. You might have to micromanage and you might even have to fire someone. No one will ever care about your book as much as you do, so you have to be willing to fight for it. Number eight, write in order. But Jenna, I wanna write my favorite scenes first. So did I and it bit me in the ass. When I wrote my debut novel, I wrote all the exciting scenes first. I wrote the first kiss, I wrote the first act of violence, all that good stuff. And I ended up having to write it all over again. Here's the foremost problem with writing out of order. You're writing the fun stuff first. That means all the boring shit is saved for last. The final run of writing is the hardest part. So not only are you at the most grueling stretch of the race, but you've saved the most tedious obstacles for last. You, my friend, are an idiot. But the issue I personally ran into was that my characters and my writing style evolved over time. By the time I got to the scenes I'd already written, not only had my characters changed, but my writing style had vastly improved, which means I had to scratch everything and start again. Writing out of order is a waste of time. You're welcome to try it, but I suggest you learn from my mistake. Number nine, stop giving a shit. When I first entered the professional writing arena, one of the biggest things that got in my way was my propensity to give a shit. I was so concerned about what other people thought of me. I was afraid that if I wrote a certain way or if I portrayed myself and my platform in a certain manner, no one would take me seriously. I was afraid to be 100% myself, both in my writing and my brand, and everything I produced reflected that. And it's so ironic that the minute I stopped giving a shit, 
everything changed. When I stopped censoring my channel and started speaking like my actual self, my subscriber count boomed. When I started writing the sort of fiction I love, namely romance and violence, I became a bestseller and an award-winning author. It's not luck or timing, it's logic. For starters, if you're passionate about a genre, chances are other people are passionate about it too. We tend to assume we're unique snowflakes, but the fact is, there are a bazillion people out there who like the same crap we do. And lastly, authenticity is infectious. People appreciate freedom and honesty. And even if that weren't the case, limiting yourself based on other people's opinions isn't worth the effort. Not only am I more successful now that I don't give a shit, I'm a lot happier too. And last but certainly not least, number 10, trust your gut. With a lot of the mistakes I mentioned, there was a voice in my head saying, bitch, what? I didn't listen because I assumed I didn't know any better. I was a newbie after all. I didn't listen because I assumed whoever had advised me knew what they were talking about. I didn't listen because clearly I was at fault. I wasn't being reasonable or easygoing. And every single time I look back at those moments and think, wow, I knew the answer all along and I ignored it because I didn't trust my gut. Now I'm not sitting here telling you to trust your ego. Ego told me I didn't need an outline. Ego told me that filter words were fine. Ego is a dirty rotten liar. But gut instinct is a very different voice. It speaks from a place of love and protection and often tells you things you don't want to hear. I meet writers every single day who know they're on the right path but second guess it because they're not listening to their gut. Don't do that. Yes, you may be new to the journey. Yes, you may have a lot to learn but you know yourself better than anyone else. Trust your intuition. Trust what works for you specifically and trust when something isn't right. Learn to recognize this instinct and follow it because it will save you a lot of grief in the future. So that's all I got for you today. A huge thank you to Emily Cannon for requesting today's topic. If you'd like the chance to have a video dedicated to you or if you want access to tons of other rewards, check me out on Patreon. We've got an exclusive writing group. You get early access to all of my videos. There's a monthly live stream. You can get signed books. It's amazing. We have so much fun there. I got it linked below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I post new videos on Wednesdays, and if you want to be alerted as soon as I upload, ring that bell. The Savior's Champion and The Savior's Sister are available in ebook, paperback, audiobook, and hardback, so if you want to check out my award-winning, best-selling dark fantasy romance novels, you totally should. I'll love you forever. They're linked below. And be sure to follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Tumblr, Facebook, and BookBub, and of course, you can tweet me at Jenna Moresi. Bye! Hey. Everyone, I'm Flynn. I fucking love myself. So if you love me, and you don't mind a bit of Jenna, then why don't you press the fucking subscribe button? You know you want to. Because then you get to hear more of me. Anyways, press that button, ding the bell, and we'll have a great fucking time.